Hello and welcome to Being Prodigy. Now put on your headphones and start learning. To get special study material, just contact us through the link in the description. Novels, Society and History In this chapter we will study the history of one such form, the novel, a history that is closely connected to the making of modern ways of thinking. We will first look at the history of the novel in the West, and then see how this form developed in some of the regions of India. As you will see, despite their differences, there were many commonalites of focus between novels written in different parts of the world. The rise of the novel The novel is a modern form of literature. It is born from print, a mechanical invention. We cannot think of the novel without the printed book. In ancient times, as you have seen, Chapter 7, manuscripts were handwritten. These circulated among very few people. In contrast, because of being printed, novels were widely read and became popular very quickly. At this time big cities like London were growing rapidly and becoming connected to small towns and rural areas through print and improved communications. Novels produced a number of common interests among their scattered and varied readers. As readers were drawn into the story and identified with the lives of fictitious characters, they could think about issues such as the relationship between love and marriage, the proper conduct for men and women, and so on. The novel first took firm root in England and France. Novels began to be written from the 17th century, but they really flowered from the 18th century. New groups of lower middle class people such as shopkeepers and clerics, along with the traditional aristocratic and gentlemanly classes in England and France now formed the new readership for novels. As readership grew and the market for books expanded, the earnings of authors increased. This freed them from financial dependence on the patronage of aristocrats, and gave them independence to experiment with different literary styles. Henry Fielding, a novelist of the early 18th century, claimed he was the founder of a new province of writing where he could make his own laws. The novel allowed flexibility in the form of writing. Walter Scott remembered and collected popular Scottish ballads which he used in his historical novels about the wars between Scottish clans. The epistolary novel, on the other hand, used the private and personal form of letters to tell its story. Samuel Richardson's Pamela, written in the 18th century, told much of its story through an exchange of letters between two lovers. These letters tell the reader of the hidden conflicts in the heroine's mind. The publishing market for a long time the publishing market excluded the poor. Initially, novels did not come cheap. Henry Fielding's Tom Jones, 1749, was issued in six volumes priced at three shillings each, which was more than what a laborer earned in a week. But soon, people had easier access to books with the introduction of circulating libraries in 1740. Technological improvements in printing brought down the price of books and innovations in marketing led to expanded sales. In France, publishers found that they could make super profits by hiring out novels by the hour. The novel was one of the first mass-produced items to be sold. There were several reasons for its popularity. The worlds created by novels were absorbing and believable, and seemingly real. While reading novels, the reader was transported to another person's world, and began looking at life as it was experienced by the characters of the novel. Besides, novels allowed individuals the pleasure of reading in private, as well as the joy of publicly reading or discussing stories with friends or relatives. In rural areas people would collect to hear one of them reading a novel aloud, often becoming deeply involved in the lives of the characters. Apparently, a group at Slough in England were very pleased to hear that Pamela, the heroine of Richardson's popular novel, had got married in their village. They rushed out to the parish church and began to ring the church bells. In 1836 a notable event took place when Charles Dickens's Pickwick Papers was serialized in a magazine. Magazines were attractive since they were illustrated and cheap. Serialization allowed readers to relish the suspense, discuss the characters of a novel and live for weeks with their stories, like viewers of television soaps today. The world of the novel more than other forms of writing which came before, novels are about ordinary people. They do not focus on the lives of great people or actions that change the destinies of states and empires. Instead, they are about the everyday life of common people. This is Being Prodigy. To get special study material, just contact us through the link in the description. And please subscribe to show your support. In the 19th century, Europe entered the Industrial Age. Factories came up, business profits increased and the economy grew. But at the same time, workers faced problems. 
cities expanded in an unregulated way and were filled with overworked and underpaid workers. The unemployed poor roamed the streets for jobs, and the homeless were forced to seek shelter in workhouses. The growth of industry was accompanied by an economic philosophy which celebrated the pursuit of profit and undervalued the lives of workers. Deeply critical of these developments, novelists such as Charles Dickens wrote about the terrible effects of industrialization on people's lives and characters. His novel Hard Times, 1854, describes Cocktown, a fictitious industrial town, as a grim place full of machinery, smoking chimneys, rivers polluted purple and buildings that all look the same. Here workers are known as hands, as if they had no identity other than as operators of machines. Dickens criticized not just the greed for profits but also the ideas that reduced human beings into simple instruments of production. In other novels too, Dickens focused on the terrible conditions of urban life under industrial capitalism. His Oliver Twist, 1838, is the tale of a poor orphan who lived in a world of petty criminals and beggars. Brought up in a cruel workhouse, Oliver was finally adopted by a wealthy man and lived happily ever after. But not all novels about the lives of the poor gave readers the comfort of a happy ending. Emil Zola's Germinal, 1885, on the life of a young miner in France explores in harsh detail the grim conditions of miners' lives. It ends on a note of despair, the strike the hero leads fails, his co-workers turn against him, and hopes are shattered. Community and society The vast majority of readers of the novel lived in the city. The novel created in them a feeling of connection with the fate of rural communities. The 19th century British novelist Thomas Hardy, for instance, wrote about traditional rural communities of England that were fast vanishing. This was actually a time when large farmers fenced off land, bought machines and employed laborers to produce for the market. The old rural culture with its independent farmers was dying out. We get a sense of this change in Hardy's Mayor of Casterbridge, 1886. It is about Michael Henchard, a successful grain merchant, who becomes the mayor of the farming town of Casterbridge. He is an independent-minded man who follows his own style in conducting business. He can also be both unpredictably generous and cruel with his employees. Consequently, he is no match for his manager and rival Donald Farfrey who runs his business on efficient managerial lines and is well regarded for he is smooth and even tempered with everyone. We can see that Hardy mourns the loss of the more personalized world that is disappearing, even as he is aware of its problems and the advantages of the new order. The novel uses the vernacular, the language that is spoken by common people. By coming closer to the different spoken languages of the people, the novel produces the sense of a shared world between diverse people in a nation. Novels also draw from different styles of language. A novel may take a classical language and combine it with the language of the streets and make them all a part of the vernacular that it uses. Like the nation, the novel brings together many cultures. The new woman The most exciting element of the novel was the involvement of women. The 18th century saw the middle classes become more prosperous. Women got more leisure to read as well as write novels. And novels began exploring the world of women, their emotions and identities, their experiences and problems. Many novels were about domestic life, a theme about which women were allowed to speak with authority. They drew upon their experience, wrote about family life and earned public recognition. This is Being Prodigy. To get special study material, just contact us through the link in the description. And please subscribe to show your support. The novels of Jane Austen give us a glimpse of the world of women in genteel rural society in early 19th century Britain. They make us think about a society which encouraged women to look for good marriages and find wealthy or propertied husbands. The first sentence of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice states, It is a truth universally acknowledged, that a single man in possession of a good fortune, must be in want of a wife. This observation allows us to see the behavior of the main characters, who are preoccupied with marriage and money, as typifying Austen's society. But women novelists did not simply popularize the domestic role of women. Often their novels dealt with women who broke established norms of society before adjusting to them. Such stories allowed women readers to sympathize with rebellious actions. In Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, published in 1847, young Jane is shown as independent and assertive. While girls of her time were expected to be quiet and well-behaved, Jane at the age of 10 protests against the hypocrisy of her elders with startling bluntness. 
she tells her aunt who is always unkind to her, people think you a good woman, but you are bad, you are deceitful, I will never call you aunt as long as I live, novels for the young novels for young boys idealized a new type of man, someone who is powerful, assertive, independent and daring, most of these novels were full of adventures set in places remote from Europe, the colonizers appear heroic and honorable, confronting native peoples in strange surroundings, adapting to native life as well as changing it, colonies and territories and then developing nations there. Books like R. L. Stevenson's Treasure Island, 1883 or Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book, 1894, became great hits. G. A. Hattie's historical adventure novels for boys were also wildly popular during the height of the British Empire. They aroused the excitement and adventure of conquering strange lands. They were set in Mexico, Alexandria, Siberia and many other countries. They were always about young boys who witness grand historical events, get involved in some military action and show what they called English courage. Love stories written for adolescent girls also first became popular in this period, especially in the U.S., notably Ramona, 1884 by Helen Hunt Jackson and a series entitled What Katie Did, 1872 by Sarah Chauncey Woolsey, who wrote under the pen, named Susan Coolidge. Colonialism and after the novel originated in Europe at a time when it was colonizing the rest of the world, the early novel contributed to colonialism by making the readers feel they were part of a superior community of fellow colonialists. The hero of Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, 1719, is an adventurer and slave trader. Shipwrecked on an island, Crusoe treats colored people not as human beings equal to him, but as inferior creatures. He rescues a native and makes him his slave. He does not ask for his name but arrogantly gives him the name Friday. But at the time, Crusoe's behavior was not seen as unacceptable or odd, for most writers of the time saw colonialism as natural. Colonized people were seen as primitive and barbaric, less than human, and colonial rule was considered necessary to civilize them, to make them fully human. It was only later, in the 20th century, that writers like Joseph Conrad, 1857-1924, wrote novels that show the darker side of colonial occupation. The colonized, however, believed that the novel allowed them to explore their own identities and problems, their own national concerns. Let us see how the novel became popular in India and what significance it had for society. The novel comes to India stories and prose were not new to India. Banabhata's Kadambari, written in Sanskrit in the 7th century, is an early example. The Panchatantra is another. There was also a long tradition of prose tales of adventure and heroism in Persian and Urdu, known as Dastan. However, these works were not novels as we know them today. The modern novel form developed in India in the 19th century, as Indians became familiar with the Western novel. The development of the vernaculars, print and a reading public helped in this process. Some of the earliest Indian novels were written in Bengali and Marathi. The earliest novel in Marathi was Babur Padmanji's Yamuna Pirayatan, 1857, which used a simple style of storytelling to speak about the plot of widows. This was followed by Lakshman Moreshwar Helb's Muktamala, 1861. This was not a realistic novel, it presented an imaginary romance narrative with a moral purpose. Leading novelists of the 19th century wrote for a cause. This is Being Prodigy. To get special study material, just contact us through the link in the description. And please subscribe to show your support. Thank you and happy learning.